Finally ready for some softball as Tennessee and Stetson tangle at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. Pickens winds in, deals, and we are underway. It is the freshman Addison Foster leading off out of Lockport, Illinois. Foster, everyday starter, right out of the blocks for the Hatters. And heading the count, two balls and no strikes. Strike of the afternoon for Pickens. And Shelly Cousins cheers her freshman on down the line. Cousins now in her fourth season at the helm of these Hatters. Three one early, and boo, that was some of the freshman struggles for Carlin Pickens last season. That control. Maybe just some jitters here, getting to pitch at home for the first time this year. Just a little excited, and we're seeing Foster here showing off that she's a triple threat. We've seen her show bunt, slap. Uh, outfield's playing pretty tight on her, treating her like a slapper. Um, you know, all we need to do is pound the zone here and get ready to play defense. And the 3-1 is tapped foul, so count quickly runs full. The first payoff pitch. We'll try it again. Foster doing a nice job seeing a lot of pitches here early. A lot of pitches. A little late on that velocity coming in from Pickens. Another 3 2. Bounced up the middle. That is Fall, the true freshman, a shortstop, and she gets the first out of the first inning. So a laborious first out there for Carlin Pickens, but she does get the out nonetheless as Madeline Sinaraki, another power freshman, climbs in for Stetson off to a hot start. Best bat early in this lineup. And she takes outside, ball one. Strike. Madeline swinging away here. Tennessee's corners are pretty playing pretty tight here. They definitely are not intimidated by the bunt. They're used to speed. Um, they're going to have to really work to get the ball past these corners. Ball and two strikes, and they're corners that are experienced. This is a Tennessee team that returned 17 players from the Women's College World Series run a year ago. Just Five new faces, two out of the portal, and three freshmen for Karen Weekly and company in 2024. Two strike pitch is just outside, two and two. That's a nice spot though, very nice spot. Let's see if Pickens goes back to it. Her 2-2 two -two offer. Slow roll at a third, Gibson crashing in, and there are two out. Pickens doing a nice job of letting her defense work, just feeding them ground balls. Two up, two down, two slow rollers on the left side of the infield. Boo Gibson over there on the hot corner, played a lot of first base last season. That's shifted corners in the infield. As the base is clear with two down for Cammie Epley in the three spot for Stetson. Second team, all a son last season for Epley, everyday starter, really the most experienced offensive starter coming back for this Hatter team, and she bounces it to second. So the infield getting its work into first. Rodriguez with the put out. Three up, three down to the top of the first for Carl.
Lauren Hobbs firing her first pitch of the afternoon. The lefty gets the start for Stetson today. Hobbs has thrown a lot of innings for Stetson this year. It's pretty rare to see teams really live off of two pitchers, but both Tennessee and Stetson have done that for a majority of this season so far. Last pitched in game two of the Wednesday doubleheader. Didn't pitch earlier today. She faces the All-American Kiki Malloy at the top of this potent Tennessee lineup, and Malloy quickly ahead, two balls and no strikes. For Hobbs to be successful today, she's gonna have to really pound that zone. She's not a strikeout pitcher, she's a feed your defense type of pitcher. Her 2-0 offer, and the dirt, three balls and no strikes. Malloy, the All-American, back for a fifth season, was really never in doubt. She is now the home run queen, 58 and counting. The highest mark in program history. 3-0 pitch is off the shoulder. And Malloy works her way aboard to begin the bottom of the first. to the elbow guard and boot. That's not the first one on first base. Kiki Malone with all sorts of speed for Riley West at the dish. Really good start to the year for West as Malone takes that aggressive secondary, doesn't go. That's five straight balls twirled from the left hand of Lauren Hobbs in a circle. There goes Malloy, throw to second is not in time, and Malloy picks up the stolen base, her seventh of the season, and that extends her SEC career leading tally, automatic runner in scoring position for Tennessee. And this is serious speed coming to you. Malloy is one of the few players on the lineup that have an automatic green light. She can steal whenever she wants unless it's taken off. Puts it to good use there. She chats with Karen Weekly and makes her drop back to second. So in scoring position for Riley West, and West has been the best bat early in the year for Karen Weekly and the Tennessee Lady Volunteers. The senior hitting a clean 441 and already has eight extra base hits. Lays off, it's 3-0, and and Hobbs trying to find the zone. Boo. You're seeing a difference in lineups here between Tennessee and Stetson. Stetson has three lefties in a row, all triple threats, trying to slap and bunt. Tennessee's coming at you with power. Uh, Coach Weekly said this is not one of their fastest teams, but that they have good speed, and that looked like some serious speed to me. There's a strike. Three and one. Yeah, it is power, power, and more power as you look up and down this Tennessee lineup, it's a team that averaged just under seven runs a game last season. That was third in the country. Off to an okay start this season, eight and four through their first dozen games. The three one is a called strike two to West. And who Tennessee's lost a lot of games to Mother Nature early in the season, but they've gone out and tested themselves, a couple of top 10 opponents and have played tight. The offense just hasn't quite shown up. Yeah, that eight and four record definitely does not show what a great team they are. They're playing tough competition day in and day out. Payoff pitch to West. Skied in the air, shallow center field. Epley on the way in, makes the catch at the cap. Round number one. First out recorded in the circle by Hobbs. And she faces McKenna Gibson. Five preseason all SEC selections for Tennessee. There's a strike. Even at a ball and a strike. And Karen Weekly was saying, Boo, that 
the offensive numbers haven't been where they expected yet. You see Malloy there in scoring position, but she's had a little sluggish start to the year, given her standards. Same with Boo Gibson at the plate, but Gibson's still hitting over 300. Hard to imagine that's yeah, quiet, right? Their off days are some other players' <laughs> best days. Hobbs is doing a nice job here of trying to keep the ball on, off the plate. Um, you know, to the to the viewer, it may look like she's missing her spots, but she's really just trying to expand the zone. She's facing really tough Tennessee hitters here and trying to give her defense the best chance to defend the ball. Let's see what the Hatters dial up. The one-two on the way. And Gibson winds it up the middle. Epley running in and makes the snag. Two down. Tom's doing a nice job coming back and getting those back-to-back -back fly balls after the leadoff base run. First ever plate appearance inside Sherry Parker Lee Stadium, the Oklahoma transfer, Sophia Nugent. Takes the ball outside, Nugent coming in from Patty Gasso's squad and a welcome addition to this Tennessee team has provided stability behind the plate and some production at the dish. Already three home runs this season. Nugent trying to slow herself down a little bit, getting back in the box. Looked a little antsy there on the first couple. She's been to two Women's College World Series. She's been on the big stage. Healthy hack that comes up empty there. She was a role player there for Oklahoma, but had some key moments down the stretch, including a couple games in the Women's College World Series. Really found her stride late in last season for the Sooners. 2-1 pitch. On the way from Hobbs. Aggressive take. Two on with two out. A little bit of a change of game plan there. We've seen Hobbs paint the outside corner on the other hitters, decides to come back inside on new gen. So two on with two down for Destiny Rodriguez. Rodriguez takes the first, ball one. meeting in the circle for Stetson. Trying to settle Hobbs down early. Not a ton of first pitch strikes to this first five players in the Tennessee order. He's trying to calm down the She's ingrained that in her players. She's a two-time ASUN player of the year, was an NPF star, and she's ready to compete. And certainly not afraid of tough competition to begin the season. As Stetson takes on the eighth-ranked Tennessee Lady Vols on their home turf here this weekend. Top of the second, heart of the order for the Hatters as Pickens goes back to work. Morgan fouls it away. Vet Morgan, senior cleanup hitter for Stetson, off to a nice start this season, hitting over 300. Pickens is not messing around. She is definitely pounding the zone. You like to see that after the first couple batters were a little shaky. 
As a pitching coach, you like to see them pound the zone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can't defend walks or home runs, so you want to put it in the zone and let your defense make the plays. Just Second like short that. hop to Gibson. That was nicely done. One down. Sometimes those can be tough, the tweeners, but she handled it. So four ground outs for all the outs here created by Carlin Pickens and she faces the DP lap Freeman. We're seeing the Hatters swing early in the count. That's going to be the best pitch for pitchers. You know, you throw one pitch in the zone and then you're expanding after that. Freeman, the transfer in from Presbyterian, her first season down in the land for the Stetson Hatters was an everyday player last season for Presbyterian. Hit 250 with six homers. So had a nice start against Longwood earlier today. That was a 9-6 loss for the Hatters, but Freeman did drive home half of those runs. I like the pace that Pickens is pitching at. She's calm, she's relaxed, she looks very confident. Definitely a mature pitcher on the mound, and she's only a sophomore. She's ahead of the ball in two strikes. That's something Karen Weekly talked about last season, going into Pickens', Pickens freshman season. She had that composure of an upperclassman already. You throw in a year that ends in the Women's College World Series, and suddenly you've got a sophomore making her first home start with feels like eons of experience under her belt. Yeah, Pickens has faced some of the best hitters in the country throwing in the SEC. This is another day at the office for her. Yeah. Down the right field line, slicing foul and caught. Nicely tracked by Taylor Panel, runs it down along the chalk, and there's two out. So the base is empty and two out. Here in the top of the second for Annabella McLaren. Takes inside, ball one. And quickly two balls and no strikes. Claren in her sophomore season played a lot late in the year for Stetson at the tail end of 2023. And let's see if Annabelle has the green light on 3-0. It's going to be one of the best pitches to hit. Would you give it to her? Definitely. All you're, right, looking, you're looking to get a strike here. Swing away. <laughs> here is the 3-0. Good pitch to hit, called strike. And there it is. <laughs> that was your chance. What do you go to here if you're Pickens? I'm pounding the zone again. I'm going with my best stuff. Twirls home the 3 1. Grounded to third. Gibson smothers and fires. And the side is retired. High corner. Good idea. Lefty pitcher on the mound. That's a hard move to get the button spin around the first. I like where her head's at on that. Nice job coming over by Morgan, the second baseman as well. You ever hold your breath as a coach when the second baseman's the one fielding the laser there? <laughs> That's their specialty. <laughs> second basemen are tough. That's one of the toughest positions on yeah. the field. A lot of coverages, uh, a lot of things that you have to know game IQ wise. So one down for Zeta Pooney as she takes a strike. That was a 21 first pitch inning for Hobbs in the circle. Only nine strikes, but a couple of strikes to begin the second. 0-1 on Pooney the senior. Grounded is short. Fielded at the belt. Foster finds out number two. Job settling in here in the second. Three pitches and two quick outs for the Stetson left. 
definitely settling in, but there is no break in this lineup. To have an eight hitter hitting 227 is crazy. She's going to have to work her zones, keep the ball down, and feed her defense again. So it's Julia Gonsoya Nopolis who takes a strike on the outside corner, second year transfer from Arizona. Gonsoya Nopolis now in her senior season, and you mentioned it hitting 227 out of the eight spot. Hobbs home with a 1-1. One, one. Tap foul, 1-2. One oh, the two-strike offer, Katsoyanopoulos. Flips it to shallow center field, falling quickly and finds the grass. First hit of the game. It's a two out single for Julia Katsoyanopoulos. And that one just drops in. Deep in the, deep in the infield, short of the outfield. It's not pretty, but it works. A hit is a hit. I went fishing down there to get it, but like I said, no pictures in that final scorebook. It is a two out base dog. For Tennessee, one on for the ninth spot. The true freshman, Bella Fall, who takes the ball in the dirt. And well, if you are just watching Tennessee for the first time this season, keep your eyes on Bella Fall there at the dish. This is a freshman that the Lady Balls are very high on. Two balls and no strikes. The offensive numbers there don't tell the full story. Big part of the reason Karen Weekly recruited her is because of what she can do defensively. So she's got a chance to be maybe the best defensive shortstop in program history. She's in a real critical part of the lineup. Teams that have good seven, eight, and nine hitters are going to be teams that produce runs. Their job is to get on base, whatever it takes, however they can do it, set the table, let Kiki Malloy and Riley West come up and hit them in. Hobbs home with the 2-1. Popped up. Shallow left center field. Who wants it? The center fielder, Epley, takes care of it and closes the book on the second. So one stranded for the Lady Vols in the ball team later this season on the diamond. But so far, they're locked in a duel with the number eight team of the country. As Carlin Fickens goes back to work, we're scoreless headed to the top of the third. It's the bottom third of the Hatter lineup. And the first pitch is hit well into the gap the other way. Going to one-hop the wall. Marissa Baxter headed for extra bases. It's a leadoff double for Stetson. The Hatters are being more aggressive since the first inning. You're seeing them hack at the first pitch, and that's what happens. Again, the best pitch to hit early in the count. Good piece of hitting there from Baxter, the senior first baseman. It's the first base runner, first hit of the game for Stetson. We'll see what Coach Cousins calls for here. They have 11 sacrifice hits on the year. Their job is just producing runs. I wouldn't be surprised if she dropped a button here, trying to get the runner to third, get the top of the order up, and then try to score. Yeah, they brought in to beat Jayla Haynes to pitch run at second. So I think you're all over it, Coach. We'll see what the script is for Dylan Anthony in the eighth spot. Shows bunt, drops it down. Gibson fields fair. Rodriguez takes care of it at first. One out. But Haynes, the pinch runner, does advance to third. And this is a great job on Anthony's part, getting the bunt down on the first pitch. You know, she's not trying to get on base with the bunt here. She's let, giving herself up, sacrificing for the team. Grab a Coke and a smile and head back to the dugout, get a high five. You did a great job. Coke and a smile, I love that. <laughs> 
That's what I'm doing next half inning. <laughs> so the first run of the game, 60 feet away, Giannapoli lefty up to the plate with one out. And she takes strike one. We'll see if the Hatters are an angle down here. Angle down is when the runner on third, any ball that's on the ground, they're gonna take off going home, put pressure on the defense. I would imagine with the speed at third and a slapper up, that will be an angle down. Two no balls and two strikes. Napoli everyday starter at third base for the Hatters. Trying to find an offensive spark here in week three of the regular season. 0-2. He's off, one and two. Napoli has a great eye, eight walks on the season, but she's gonna have to be swinging away here. Takes high and works the count to two balls and two strikes. Again, those seven, eight, nine hitters, so important for scoring runs. Stetson trying to jump on the board first here in the third. 2-2 two -two pitch. Half-hearted swing for strike three. First strike out of the outing for Carlin Pickens. Two out in the third. So it turns it back to the top of the lineup. Addison Foster back at the plate. Runner on third with two down now for Stetson. Foster goes after the first pitch and fouls it off. Foster swinging away here. Last at bat, chopped one to shortstop. Let's see what she does on this pitch. Ball and a strike, Foster in as an everyday shortstop as a true freshman coming out of Lockport High School in Lockport, Illinois. Haynes, the pinch runner at third, 1-1 one, one, on the way in from Pickens. Rounded up the middle at short fall. Fires to first and the side is retired. Carlin Pickens strands a runner in scoring position. Steps in with its first hit of the ball game. But above it all, she's someone that Karen Weekly calls not just a generational player, but a generational person. When Kiki's up, there's always a chance for a home run to come into effect. Kiki hits more homers in a season than some athletes hit in an entire career. Yeah, I just saw that 25 tally from last season. That's at a new program mark for Malloy. Already a couple long balls here this year. Hobbs still working. Her 0-1 is low and in. A ball and a strike. You know, hitting is all about rhythm and timing, and Kiki is definitely on time. You saw that first pitch early in the count. She's not biting at garbage. She knows to expect pitchers to try to pitch around her and try to get her to chase. She's definitely hunting one pitch. She's on time, and she's ready to attack. All right, she gets some new aluminum. You see if she attacks here. 2-1 on the way to Malloy. Hasn't seen a whole lot in the zone yet early. Got hit by a pitch on what was ball four to begin the game. 3-1 here, fouled away. Come back, come back. Malloy hitting 289 on the season and Coach Weekly said she hasn't even hit her stride yet. Imagine being close to a 300 hitter and not even being close to your stride yet. 11 hits this season for Malloy. Eight have gone for extra bases. Four doubles, a triple, and three daggers. Just a lightning bolt out of the leadoff spot. Payoff pitch. Waits back and fouls it off. Hobbs doing a nice job out there. She's definitely keeping the Lady Vols guessing on what's coming at them. Ooh. 
strike three looking. Hobbs fans the All-American. Hobbs freezes her. It doesn't look like Molloy was expecting that pitch to be in the zone. First strike out of the afternoon for Lauren Hobbs. And it brings up Riley West. 0 1. West 0 for 1, flied out to center field, was dinged up a little at the start of last season, but then came on nicely for Tennessee, ended up being one of the most productive bats in the order. Ground ball up the middle, Morgan working to her right. Two down to third. What do you see from Hobbs here? Hobbs is just keeping them off balance, working working both sides of the plate. Um, she's not being super predictable. Um, something interesting for coaches and parents to notice is these Tennessee balls are running every hit out hard. These are SEC Women's College World Series caliber players running every hit out. They're not above it. They're going to do whatever they have to do to get on base. Base is clear for Gibson. He takes in the dirt ball one. Gibson flied out the center field. He's closer to a line out, hit it well, but he's right to Cammie Epley. out here. Two balls and no strikes. Hitter's pitch would be a good time to throw a change up right now. You know Boo's going to be hunting for a strike. Let's see what she brings. In the left, falling fast and down for a base hit. Two out single for McKenna Gibson. And Lady Vols have a runner on in the third. just drops in. That's what we like to call a dying quail. <laughs> that was very similar to the right field single. Julia Katsoyanopoulos had last half in. Just found some of that sun-soaked grass in the outfield. One on for the cleanup hitter, Sophia Nugent. And he takes a strike. Love Nugent's approach when she's up here hitting. You can see she's in yes, yes, no phase, meaning every time the pitcher is going to throw, she's yes, 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 I'm going to swing until she decides that it's ball. Takes a cut there, nothing and two. Is that something that's an innate ability a lot of players have coming in, or how do you coach that? You know, it just depends. At this level, these Tennessee hitters are coming in here. These, they're coming from the best travel teams around sure. America. So a lot of these hitters have that, you know, in their mind. But you have to learn to, te to teach. You have to teach some of them to learn to be aggressive. Some hitters like to take strikes, and uh, they got to learn to take hacks early in the count. Takes a ball there. No movement from Gibson. These balls definitely don't get cheated on taking big hacks. They have coach Chris Malvo as the hitting coach, and he is constantly telling them, hit the ball hard on the line. They're not trying to hit home runs. Home runs are going to happen. They're a home run hitting team, but that's a result. That's not part of their process. Flared foul. Will it stay in? No. Bounces off the railing down the right field line. We'll try it again. A ball and two strikes on Nugent. As Tennessee tries to break the stalemate here in the third. Hobbs trying to strand at least a runner on the base pass for the third consecutive inning. And the one-two.
Nugent has worked it full after being down 0-2. We're going to see the runner in motion here looking to go from first to third on any ball that's to the outfield. There is Gibson, won't matter, ball four in the dirt. So Tennessee with two on and two out. Second walk issued by Hobbs, third free pass if you do. Amanda Allen in the pinch run. She takes over for Gibson at second. Allen with plenty of speed to get home on a base dunk. So the table set for Destiny Rodriguez. Two on, two out here in the home third. Tennessee trying to crack on the board first in their home opener in 2024. That gets away. Three bases for everyone, two in scoring position. to Rodriguez, fouled off. Two strikeouts right now on the season. She's going to put the ball in play, and they're going to have to play defense. It's sharply through the left side. Allen in to score. Nugent coming behind her in a rundown, goes back to third, and Rodriguez scoots up to second after driving home a run. One nothing Tennessee. They do let that trail runner get to second. Now we have two runners in scoring position. That's going to be huge for them. Whenever there's a cut from the outfield, it is the infielder's job to make sure that trail runner does not get second base on a freebie. So still on second and third after Rodriguez opens up the scoring and Taylor Panel takes strike one. Taylor tried to bunt last time, dropped a nice quick bunt, but got thrown out. I would imagine she's throwing uh, that she's swinging away in this situation. Ball and a strike panel playing a full healthy season after shoulder surgery a year ago. Yeah, Karen Weekly. go to the bench here for a pinch runner. Looks like Laura Mueller has a helmet on, and that is Mueller, the MTSU transfer, coming in to run for Rodriguez at second. Mueller has speed in all caps. In scoring position, as panel goes after the 1-1, one, one, hits it through the left side. Nugent's in, Mueller rustling home behind her and is out at the plate. McLaren with the left field cannon cuts down the potential third run of the inning. Let's nice play in the outfield. So Tennessee does get a pair of runs, unable to score the third and here, and then some. You got extra pieces helping out as well. Yeah, Pooney off to a little bit of a slow start. Had an off-season uh, surgery, getting back into it. Something you gotta love though is that Karen Weekly has total confidence in her, believes she's gonna be back, and keeps giving her the advance that she needs. They hit 363 
last season. 14 homers and tied for the team lead with 60 runs batted in. All that with a nagging labrum injury in her throwing shoulder that happened in the second weekend of the season. Never would have known it if you base it on the power she had on the field. Rockets one up the middle and Epley is able to snare it out of the sky. That is a well hit ball. And I said today is gonna to be the day that Pooney comes back. I can feel it. That goes to that Malvo hitting strategy. Just hit it hard, hit it level, hit it right on a line. Never got above shoulder high. Just happened to be right out the center field. That goes back to Katsoyanopoulos who sprays the first foul. Picked up the first Tennessee hit of the game with a two out single in the second. Started her collegiate career at Arizona, transferred into Tennessee last year, put in a lot of extra cage work with Chris Malvo. Resulted in a solid season, hit 230, a lot of production. Brought a lot of veteran presence behind the plate. Caught for the first time in her career. And now over at first base the majority of the time for Tennessee. Two pitch. Hobbs home. Popped up high in the Knoxville sky. Left field McLaren. Her tires at Soyanopolis, round number two. Hobbs not giving up a lot of hard contact. One of the hardest hit balls have been Alps. Hobbs doing a really nice job. Again, you know, he can base hit to death in the game, and these runs that they've scored have just been on grounders that found their way in. Base is empty, two out for fall in the nine hole. First pitch swinging. Pretty off speed from the left hand of Hobbs there, 0 and 1. Number, number five recruit in the country. Led North Gwinnett, big 7A school, Metro Atlanta to a state title. Most hits in program history there, and she gets caught by her fellow shortstop. Foster with a backhand stop for out number three. Clean fourth inning for Lauren Hobbs near the game this season. That's her career high, came against UCLA out in California, the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic, and twirled a perfect game, five innings against LMU. 12 Ks in that one. Been a gritty day offensively for Stetson, looking to break through as the Hatters send Laugh Freeman up to begin the fifth. Bounces to fall and fields at the belt. Fires to first. Katsoyanopoulos couldn't get back in time. Lead off base runner for the Hatters. Touch of the bag there for Julia Katsoyanopoulos. So the leadoff runner is aboard for Stetson, and Hannah Marion comes in to pinch run. And these lady ball corners know what to expect. They're ready for the bunt. Don't be surprised if they try to get the lead out at second. Brianna 
Robinson the end to run there. So we'll see what they're able to do with it here, Boo, with a leadoff runner in the fifth on Pickens. McLaren takes inside ball one. McLaren 0 for 1, grounded out a first time. Inside, two balls and no strikes. How would you attack Pickens? You know, it's a good time to drop a bunt right now. You know you're going to get a pitch that's going to be in the strike zone. She's got high velocity. You've got the corners up. If you're able to swing away and punch one through, do it. They just haven't had that happen yet. 2-0 offering. Inside, ball three. Pickens yet to issue a free pass today. And that stays intact for the moment. Called strike. Bounce up the middle. Could be two. Fall takes it herself. Throws to first. Not in time. Lead runner retired. There's one out. Paul does a nice job here of trying to set up the double play. Just gets caught off balance trying to jump over the runner. So McLaren on first. Now one down here in the top of the fifth. As Marissa Baxter digs in. Responsible for the lone hatter hit. And she takes a strike. Baxter, opposite field double in the first pitch of the third. But eventually got stranded over at third. The fifth pitch of the outing comes in from Pickens, and it's sprayed foul. I like seeing the communication between Nugent and Pickens over here, talking about she missed her spot, but still a decent pitch. Um, just trying to, you know, reassure her pitcher, pound the zone, pound the zone. You've got good stuff, and your defense is behind you. Popped up. Tail and foul, Katsoyanopoulos chases, it's off the netting. That's part of that veteran presence. Karen Weekly brought it in the transfer portal, Nugent behind the plate, paired up with the powerful combo of Pickens and Gotcha in the circle. Catchers are definitely the unsung hero. Behind every great pitcher is an even better catcher. And the battery nice gets pitch. a strikeout. That's and this is part of what makes Pickens so deadly. She comes at you with gas, you know, upper 60s, low 70s, and then she throws just pure cheddar over the plate and you whiff. Great job by Pickens there. That's one that can make the best look foolish. So two out. Sky to left, first pitch from Anthony. Sends West to foul territory, and she gloves it for the final out of the inning. So Pickens strands a runner on in the top of the fifth. Tennessee Huggins, particularly hard off the bat. Let's see what the Lady Balls drop in the fifth. Top of the order, and it begins with Kiki Malloy. Goes after the first pitch, high in the air, deep center field, and Queen Kiki extends her reign. 3-0 Tennessee. On time, 
got every bit of that ball. Gotta love when a hitter swings at the first pitch. Fourth home run of the season for Kiki Malloy, and she extends her lead at the top. Puts a charge into the home half of the fifth as Riley West takes ball one. And Hobbs has been here before. Like we said earlier in the broadcast, they faced Washington, Oklahoma State midweek. It's not the first home run that's been hit off of her. It won't be the last home runs happen. Let's see how she battles back. There she goes. She's found the zone again. Great job. Comes home with a 1-1. And that grazed West on the front thigh. Something for young hitters to really pay attention to here. You see Riley West doesn't bail from the box, willing to get hit for her team. That's just a true teammate right there. Doesn't matter how you get on, any way you can get on, whatever it takes to help the team win. Second plunked batter of the game for Hobbs. For McKenna Gibson. Gibson sprays it to shallow right, center Racky towards the line. And there's one out in the fifth. We're looking to see Tennessee here take advantage of that hit by pitch. You know, one of the most important at bats you can have in a game is after a home run or after a walk because that's when you can get the pitcher. Either get her back in rhythm or, or keep her out of rhythm. It is Sophia Nugent next. And aggressive take just off the plate, ball one. A couple of free passes earned by Nugent. Nothing looks free with the dirt on that uniform today. Looking for her first home hit as a Lady Vol on the 2-0 pitch. Nugent takes a strike. Let's see how aggressive West is over at first base. Stetson has yet to throw out a runner stealing this year. Let's see if they take advantage of that. Yeah, Riley West, the only player other than Kiki Malloy with a stolen base in this starting lineup. Certainly plenty of speed over at first. Nice job by Nugent here, just fouling off pitches. She's gonna keep fouling off pitches until she gets what she wants. Another 2-2 on the way in. Full count. I gotta tell you, I am I am a fangirl up here of Hobbs. She's gutsy. I love that she'll go in inside on hitters. She's not a high velocity pitcher, but her confidence in throwing inside is really impressive. Ground ball up the middle, it's in the center field. First home hit for Sophia Nugent. It's two on with one out for Tennessee. Thank you. 
So Laura Mueller into the game for Tennessee. She'll hit for Destiny Rodriguez. Mueller, the MTSU transfer. She was all conference USA. Was the end for day shortstop for the Blue Raiders. And has a lot of pop in this bat. And two. Beeler standing in tall. Hobbs home with the 0 2 pitch. Down and out. We see Hobbs there pointing to her head, reminding her, her catcher, be smart, don't get baited by the runner at first, their speed on second. If you pick to one, they're gonna take off to three. Not coming easy for Hobbs here in the fifth. Tennessee spoiling a number of decent pitches around the plate. It's been containing signals in the sign. Here he comes. One, two on the way. He even thought about it. the Bee Gees staying alive. <laughs> Seventh pitch of the battle, the 2-2. Hits sharply to short and into left center field, rolls all the way to the wall. West is windmilled home. Nugent hustling behind her. Mueller to third, and she Drives home two with a triple. And again, another ground ball that scores for Tennessee. Hobbs still doing a good job keeping the ball in the park, keeping the ball down. Unfortunately, that one just got through. Coach Weekly was not wrong. Mueller has some serious speed going first, going home to third on a ground ball. And the freshman Alana Leach getting her first crack home the weekend, coming in to hit for Panama. to Leach, a very familiar last name in Tennessee softball history. Now one of four Leaches to make their way through Karen Wheatley's program. Just to give you an idea of how hard it is to get into that Tennessee lineup, we got Leach hitting 250, and she's being used as a pinch hitter here. And in most programs around the country, she'd be in the starting lineup. State outfielder from the Woodlands outside of Houston and Texas. Yeah, she's ahead, three balls and no strikes. That's part of the challenge, Karen Weekly said that she faces with this team. It is deep, said it's even deeper than last year, than Oklahoma City squad, and it's gonna be a battle to find your way onto the field. A lot of times they say, if you hit, we'll find a place for you, but when you have this many hitters, there just aren't enough positions. Four pitch walk drawn by Leach. So the two pitch hitters come in and get their jobs done. Two RBI triple from Mueller and a four pitch walk. 
on by Leach. On the corners with just one out. And that's a great job as a pinch hitter coming in, taking that free pass. We've got a first and third set up now. Let's see what Stetson decides to do. You know, again, we talked about how they haven't thrown a runner out yet. We've got really great speed on third base. I would expect him to either cut the ball or pick to three. On the corners for Zeta Pooney. For two, a ground out and a fly out for Pooney. The last one was a laser to center field. Blair with plenty of pop. Time for the lead in RBIs on the team last season. And she takes ball one. What are you sitting on if you're Pooney? I'm just looking for a good pitch to hit. You know, the, Hobbs is out there trying to work through some things. Uh, Coach Cousins came out a few pitches ago. Seems like she's having her stay in there, working through it, maybe doing a little character building, trying to get her to dig deep. Rocketed to left and gone. Zeta Pooney with an exclamation mark to end it for Tennessee. A three-run blast, eight-nothing Lady Vols. She knows on any pitch she has the ability to hit a home run. Nice piece of hitting. Second home run of the season for Pooney. Coach, you called it. You said she was going to break out, and she delivers the game-ending blast to end this one early. A five spot in the fifth, and the Lady Vols for the 29th straight.